people think that memory works like a video recording. You, you have an experience, you record the event in the mind, and then you play it back later. But actually, the process is much more constructive or reconstructive. And, and so I like to think of memory as being more like a Wikipedia page where you can go in there and change it, and, and so can other people. If I've learned anything from decades of working on these problems, it's that just because somebody tells you something with a lot of detail and they express it with a lot of confidence and they show emotion when they tell you the story, it doesn't mean that it really happened. Because false memories can have those very same characteristics. A false memory is when you believe or remember that you did something or saw something that you didn't do or see. Probably all of us are to some extent susceptible to having our memories be tampered with. Even the most intelligent people in our society and the most educated. They go into therapy with one problem. They have an eating disorder. They're a little depressed or whatever. Um, they have no memories of any sex abuse in their childhood. And um, the therapist starts a series of weekly sessions where their attempts to uh, dredge up uh, sex abuse memories, you know, under the belief that maybe these symptoms are caused by sex abuse that's not being remembered. And in the course of those activities, the patient now starts to remember all kinds of things, years of brutalization supposedly banished into the unconscious. That makes me suspicious. How did this happen? How, how, do, you, how do you plant in someone's mind an entire memory for something that didn't happen? And it was in the mid-1990s that we developed the lost in the mall technique where we made people believe and remember that they had been lost in a shopping mall and frightened, crying, rescued and reunited with the family. People were much more likely to fall for suggestions that, that false confessions and these sleep deprived people so they're either kept awake or allowed to sleep in the itch. So what determines whether you're here in this? We have shown that we can plant false memories and it will affect behavior down the road. I can make you believe you got sick as a child eating a particular food. You don't want to eat the food as much later on. I could see this as a potential dieting technique. I can plant false memories that you got sick on a vodka drink and you're not that interested in vodka. Could we harness the power of this mind technology and plant false memories that can help people live a happier, healthier life? It's, the idea scares people. Facebook can easily take your photos and slip in some product through Photoshop. But what's to stop them from doing it? And I wonder whether uh, I mean, it's, it's going to also affect your memories. Oh, I drink this a lot. Mm -hmm.